good morning. What an incredibly grey morning it is. <laughs> it's feeling very Octobery today. We're on our way to B and Q. Seems it's so miserable outside to pick up a couple of things, but mainly for corner braces, so we can upgrade the cage around the brassicas. <laughs> Also on the lookout for a couple of bits, mainly field beans, because uh, what I thought was a big bag of field beans in my seed box turns out to just be uh, Sutton's broad beans, which I suppose I could use, but I'd like some field beans and I don't have any. And the other thing is garlic, but there doesn't seem to be any trace of either things here. In fact, they seem to have reduced their gardening section just to this. This is all there is here, is this little tiny rack of seeds and uh, a couple of pots. There's a couple of hose fittings and that's it because they have filled the rest of the shop with this nonsense. Christmas trees, Christmas decorations, fairy lights. Ugh, not even November. Anyway, this is what we came here mainly for today. These little chaps, so we can build a new cage. And these look just about right. At least we got something from the trip. It wasn't totally wasted. But seriously, in a place this size, like this is vast, this place, how can you reduce your gardening section to, to that? <sighs> it's beyond me. <laughs> Not the most successful B&Q trip we've ever done, but you know. <laughs> and we were gonna head straight up to the allotment from here, but I just don't think it's happening today. It's just too wet. We'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, happy Friday. We are having another go at uh, finding field beans and garlic, but I've also added sweet peas to the list because I've just noticed that everybody's going mad sowing sweet peas at the moment. And I've never been that successful with doing them over winter before, but I'm gonna give it another go. So <laughs> we're also looking for sweet peas. I'm hoping that Squires hasn't done a B and Q and just ousted all of its gardening stuff for Christmas trees, at least not yet. <laughs> fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Oh, look at the trees in this car park, aren't they beautiful? Such pretty liquid ambers. They are really lovely. I mean, look at that. That's like fuchsia pink. That is absolutely gorgeous. Mum is raring to go shopping, as you can see. <laughs> and yeah, this is a bit more like it. Um, it's not like it is in spring, obviously, but they've still got a lot here, which is good. And sweet peas, huge selection. And I've asked mum what she fancies, and the only thing she said was she wants long cutting stems, which I know it kind of depends on the year, but these ones actually have written on it <laughs> long stems for cutting. So I'm going to grow those ones and hope that she doesn't have to put them in thimbles next year, because that's normally the length of the stems on our sweet peas. Can't find any field beans here either. Got this crimson flag one, I grew that a couple of years ago, it was lovely. But this one is the Eleanor Express that I mentioned before that I want to grow in spring. So I'm gonna pick that up while it's in my sights. Also having a look outside because sometimes they have, you know, plug plants out here and it is the time when you should be able to pick up brassicas and stuff to get in, but there doesn't seem to be anything out here at all. There's this herb stand, which is a bit sad, but you would expect it this time of year. They've just got sort of rosemary and thyme and all of the perennial herbs. But there is something else we need while we're out here, because do you remember when I did the window boxes at the front of the house? Need to fill a few gaps in there and also pot in the front garden. But we're still going away with no field beans and no garlic. So I think we're going to try Chapman's on the way home and hope they've got something. <laughs> so rough, my face. No field beans, no garlic, but look, goodies. We've got red cabbage and purple sprouting broccoli. Enormously successful on the front of uh, field beans or garlic, but we came away with uh, purple sprouting broccoli, some red cabbages, uh, some violas, sweet peas, uh, Socrates cucumbers, and a whole pile of goodies from the Mediterranean shop. So not bad, not bad in the end, not bad in the end. Now what we need to do is go and, um, what do we do? Fixing, or not fixing, but building the more permanent version of the perennial brassica cage. Before they're all eaten. Before they're 
before they're all eaten. Because the pigeons <laughs> have found out that my uh, fairly flimsy pipe uh, cage, which was doing fine and sort of, uh, it would have been okay, but the massive fat uh, wood pigeons have just been like sitting on top of it and squashing it all down. So not so great. Upgrade necessary. Let's go and do that. Well, things are looking pretty dandy considering we've had all that rain although uh precious swing seat has come a cropper <laughs> that's not handling the wind too well i'm gonna have to do something about that so the rube has uh, is totally unfussed by the fact that we lost millie flo on the other hand like i said at the time uh isn't that happy i mean she's now gone broody on top of that so she's spending a lot of time in the house so we keep having to kick her out but yeah i think she's pretty sad about the whole situation poor little love So this is the cage that I'm replacing. I'm going to use this cage elsewhere. The only thing I need to do is stick some bamboo canes in those top poles. They were just slightly too long and it turns out just not high enough for what we've got growing in this bed. So it's going to have to move anyway and I need to strengthen it. So while I'm working out the measurements and things of how tall we do actually want this box to be, I'm going to leave mum to carefully unwind all of the stitching I did to attach the netting to these plastic poles. Okay, let's make a cage for those poor brassicas. Uh, this is my incredibly detailed plan. That's what we're making. Dead simple, it's just a box that fits inside the raised bed. Um, so I'm just gonna make it up as I go along really in terms of measurements, but we've just worked out that we want it to be about one meter 80 high. I know that's quite tall, um, but to be honest, this is the first time I've ever grown that nine star broccoli and it's grown way taller than I thought it was going to already. Also, the first uh, lot of tree cabbages we grew, which was about six years ago, five years ago, something like that, the ones that were in where the fruit cage is now, um, they, t <laughs> they grew along the floor because we didn't really know what we were doing and didn't know how to stake them or where the new growth kind of nodes were gonna come from. They just were a bit like octopus cabbages rather than up straight ones and the ones we've got now are tall up straight ones and i don't know how tall they're going to get and i'm only one meter 65 tall and i'm going to make it one meter 80 tall which means that i'll be able to walk inside it <laughs> so we won't need to lift it off that often anyway that's what we're doing this morning All of that wood that I picked up when home base was closing is going to come in extremely useful for making this. I'm using the smaller of the sticks, so not the two by fours, but the one by twos. I'm going to start with the height and then just build it off there. I don't tend to draw out incredibly detailed plans and measure it all out. I tend to sort of just build it as we go. And the base of this is going to be screwed into the actual uh, raised bed at the bottom which will give it the weight and hopefully give it the strength. I'm not going to be putting in uh, cross struts immediately, but I will have enough left over to do it if I think it's going to be necessary later on. So first up, I need to cut six one meter 80 uprights. <laughs>
Okay, that is all of the pieces cut and ready to go. Going to dismantle this plastic cage. I'm not going to pull the ends apart though. I'll keep them as they are because I'm probably just gonna transfer this straight onto another bed with shorter things in it. And as soon as I put the bamboo canes inside those, uh, the longer poles, uh, that will hold them straight again, or at least straight enough that they're not completely droopy if a pigeon sits on them. <laughs> If I had T joints rather than the corner joints, I would probably put an extra leg in the long strip, but I don't, so I'm not gonna do that. And then I'm gonna start assembly. So unfortunately, I don't have as much room as I used to have before I move the beds around. And once I get the beetroot bed out of the way, I'll have a bit more space again, but I don't have it at the moment. So I'm gonna be a bit cramped in this area. How I'm gonna put this together is I'm gonna put the two long ends, screw them together so that they're ready to go. I know this is a truly outstanding bit of graphic work here. <laughs> get them in place and hope that mum can hold them up while I put the connecting ends on. <laughs> That's my strategy. We will see how it goes. At this stage, everything's a bit flimsy. It really only kind of gets its strength when it's put together at the end. And so these two are going to be put on the two long edges of the raised bed. And I'm going to hope that mum can hold them up without too much flex whilst I put the two short sides on. I've already got the corner braces in place for the short side, so they should just slot into place. I've already made the holes in the wood for the short side, so I should just be able to screw them in. And as long as mum can hold it upright while I'm doing that and it doesn't all fall over, we should be laughing. I don't want to screw the base into the raised bed border yet because uh, I want to make sure that it's level and I want to be able to hammer the legs in at least a little bit just so that I can make sure that it's all level and it just gets that little bit of extra support from the depth of the raised bed itself. 
This is about as simple as a box frame can be, really. Uh, I do have center legs to put in, but they are going in right at the very end. That's to do with making sure that everything's level. And I said earlier that I haven't put any corner braces on. That will probably change. Uh, I've got loads and loads of wood left over, lots of little offcuts and things. So I will probably brace this a bit later on. The netting that we're gonna be using over this frame uh, isn't going to be particularly thick. You know, if this was gonna be environmental or something that would really, really catch the wind, there'd be no way it would stay up without corner braces, but we're using a very, very light plastic mesh that will keep the birds off, but not catch the wind too much. Yeah, we don't know, do we? Well, completely by chance, but absolutely excellently, this piece of netting uh, fits this cage perfectly. This piece of netting we got free when somebody was clearing out their shed. They didn't want it anymore. They were leaving the allotment site. So we didn't really know how big it was, but it's turned out to be absolutely perfect. So we're going round the whole of the outside of this bar one panel which is this one on the end here. Because the cage is tall enough for us to walk into it's going to have a door very similar to the type of door that we've got on the polytunnel. Not made out of plastic obviously made out of mesh. Probably a softer mesh than this mesh that we're covering the rest of it with because this isn't going to roll very easily because it's that kind of mesh that gets tangled in itself you know. So we'll put a different piece of mesh on there, but for the time being, until I've sort of decided whether we're going to have the cross struts in there, uh, I will leave this open and we'll just drape a piece of soft netting over the doorway. And that should keep the birds off the brassicas and let them grow as tall and as magnificent as they like. Okay, this is the uh, root trainer tray that I've sewn the uh, Aguadolfi board beans in one end. I don't know if you remember, I didn't have a great deal of seed, so I only ended up filling up one end last week. This end, I'm gonna put the sweet peas in that we bought this morning. Now I've just gotta remember what I did. Oh, with the seed packet. <laughs> Found them. Okay, how many seeds do we have in here then? We have got Average 35 seeds, and we have got how many holes? Four, eight, 16. Overwintered sweet peas don't need to be kept anywhere warm particularly. These are going to be just in the cold, unheated greenhouse, along with obviously the uh, broad beans. They both need similar conditions, hence it's absolutely fine putting them in the same box of root trainers. They are just gonna sit for the whole of the winter in the uh, greenhouse, it's unheated, it's gonna be cold. And the idea is to give them a head start in the spring so you just get that much earlier on the sweet pea front. 
I've had some issues growing them this way previously. Things that get left in the greenhouse over winter in previous years, I have to admit, have uh, been neglected. But this year I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna try and keep everything up here and make sure that I really look after what's in the greenhouse. So hopefully it is early sweet peas for us next year. Don't normally use the free labels that you get, but may as well stick that actually. A whole tray. Excellent. Okay, looking for space to plant the, particularly the, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Purple sprouting broccoli that we've grown. No, that we haven't grown. <laughs> we exactly haven't grown that we uh, picked up from Chapman's this morning. And what I'm thinking of doing is in the brassica cage where we've just um, built the cage, there is a bit of space in there and I don't have any other perennial brassicas to put in there at the moment. So that's an option. But the other option is in this bed below me which is where I planted out the spring cabbages a couple of weeks ago. Do you remember? Like some of these are looking really fantastic. Some of them had to be covered by bottles because they were getting attacked by birds. But yeah, they're coming on really well. But that means that this is going to be a brassica bed uh, for a considerable amount of time. So this end where I've got this old uh, teepee, that's where the failed sweet peas were from last year. We'll just forget about that. I've got to clear that out of the way. Um, but this end, if I could get this rhubarb chard out of the way, uh, could be a prime spot. Next to them, uh, which is just, oh, can I show you, just behind me there, uh, we've still got one courgette plant going, but we've got like more of that rhubarb chard and I'm thinking about consolidating. So taking these ones out of this bed and moving them in with the others. I don't know if it's gonna work. Um, but it would be really good to have them all in together. This bed's gonna to be clear fairly shortly because that courgette is sort of coming to an end. But um, I planted the rhubarb chard in two separate beds because I didn't have any space at the time, but now I've got space. Ah, ah, ah. It's just a constant shuffle, isn't it? Shall I move them over? Yeah, I think so. I'm just gonna do a big old weeding session because they're in a terrible state and then I'm gonna move them over.
remember those ones that I was really pleased that I hadn't planted out uh, when I was being really measured about how much was going in the end of this bed. Well, <sighs> when mum watched the video back, she was like, oh, I found them and I planted them. <sighs> and that's those two. Um, but they're in the wrong spot. They're in the wrong place. So I'm just going to plant what I'm planting next to them and I can always try and move those ones later. But they are the interlopers, not the red cabbage. Planting these chaps in really good and deep so they are really sturdy in the ground, giving them a really good push in. And now we basically have a whole bed of cabbages. Some I grew from seed <laughs> and some I cheated with. But there we go. There's nothing wrong with plug plants. <laughs> so now it is just the uh, purple sprouting broccoli, which I am going to put in the new cage because uh, they've got the height. Um, hole in those side pieces that were bent try and straighten them up. Good idea. Could you pass me the um, lime and bloodfish and bone? Okay, have a look at the lil. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell on camera, but she's getting her winter coat because she basically lives outside. Uh, she gets all terribly slender and silky in the summer and then come about this time, autumn, she just goes <laughs> And all like that really um, sort of coarse under fur comes out and she's basically spherical. Hey <laughs> lil, you fat cat. Huh? You fat pussy cat. Yeah, look at those pantaloons. You're like the girlies. going to pick some of the bok choy. Do you remember when I planted this under here? These little tiny, uh, straggly little chaps. Well, look at them now. <laughs> they look fab. Poo. poo from what? I don't know. They've come on really, really nicely. Well, that's a nice looking one. Look at that. Yeah, that's a beauty. Do you want to take that one? Just twist it. Twist, yeah. It's got a poo in the middle of it too. If you're not going to be home, that's probably enough for us. Probably, think? yeah, I would think. Two in the middle. <laughs> that, I think that's a snail. Oh, is it? Yeah. Going to look happy with your... Okay. <laughs> yes, Woob! Oh. 
So yeah, these um, plastic cloches have worked out brilliantly. They are going to come into their own in the spring, seriously. But look, remember that dill? At least one has survived. <laughs> There's a cluster of about three there. Brilliant. But do you know what? For mid to the end of October, I'm pretty happy with this. We've got a lot of food still coming out of the plot and uh, it's all looking quite nice. It's all looking quite nice. Hello. And uh, we've ousted Flo from her box. So she's having some corn, little girly. Not bad, not bad. That gate's the next project. It is gorgeous. Pretty good. Let's go. <laughs> right, let's head home. Okie dokie, let's shell some beans. So do you remember, this was me last week. Whoosh. This is the bag of beans. So they've been in this bag for what is it, like a week now. Um, can you hear? They're really, really dry. So I'm gonna shell them. And I said last week as well that um, you can just jar them and shell them. They're already dried like this. Uh, you can dry them off further or you can just put them straight into a jar. But we have a problem with either weevils or something that's already laid its eggs inside the beans. Not sure which way around it is, but basically it doesn't end well. And so we store them in the freezer, <laughs> which alleviates that problem entirely. So I'm just going to shell these beans and then put them straight in the freezer. So it's a bit early in the morning for doing a cheers with anything other than a cup of coffee. So I'm afraid it's... Uh, coffee cheers <laughs> at the end of this week but we did get quite a lot done uh, so last week was really productive <laughs> and this week seems to have been too I don't know it seemed to be on a bit of a roll um, yeah, do you see the inside of these beans hold on so they're really really dry and the the beans just Um, yeah, so the cage for the brassicas is up, which is uh, a big one. That wood, I've got enough left over. So around the base where I've screwed it in to the uh, raised bed, my original idea was to have um, a, like a top rail, but running around the bottom as well to screw it in. But I realised that it's not really necessary, seems I'm using the actual uh, weight of the raised bed itself as the bottom of the cage. And also it means that I've got enough left over to make a gate. You know where mum and I have been coming onto the allotment is like a different spot than where we were before because we put the badger defences at the other end. So we have to keep remembering not to use that gate. But um, we don't actually have a proper gate in the new section. Not that we had a proper one at the top either, to be honest. That's just a bit of rope. <laughs> but... Um, I need to make a gate there and having uh, only done the top half of that cage means I've got enough left over for that. So that is going to be next project. Um, also, the other thing that needs fixing is, you know, the cold frame um, that used to be outside the greenhouse and is now next to the shed. Well, Lily took, because, you know, I made it out of the old, um, what was it? The old polytunnel, the one that uh, came a cropper in the wind, like the the bought polytunnel I made it out of the remnants of that but Lily took to using it like a hammock um, this summer and she squashed all the top down <laughs> so I'm gonna have to do some repairs on that as well um, I didn't really have the heart to chuck her off it though because she looks so comfy so yeah that's a bit ruined so I'm gonna have to do some of that uh, what else have we got to do the potting bench needs fixing basically there's loads and loads of um, like construction and uh, building projects that need doing over this winter as well as massive tidy massive tidy 
But I still didn't find any field beans, which is a bit of a problem. I mean, I could order them online, but you know, I always do this. I'm just optimistic that I'm gonna walk in somewhere and actually just find them. Um, very rarely happens. Although, uh, early next week, so yeah, in the vlog next week, going to see Johanna. So you remember Johanna, uh, unfortunately we're not going down to see her garden, I'm not getting that far, but you know she works in the garden centre in Ripley. Well, she's going to stop working there, so this is her. This is going to be her last week next week. Uh, so I want to go down and see her in situ <laughs> uh, one last time before she no longer works there. So I'm going to do that early next week. So if we go down there, she might have field beans. She might have hard neck garlic. It's possible, isn't it? I will ask her. Um, so that's what we're doing next week. We've got so much to do, like we've got all the spinach in the, the polytunnel and stuff, which is uh, not in the polytunnel, in the greenhouse, which I have to get out. Um, but we've got really mild weather. You know, so it's been chucking it down this week. It's been absolutely torrential most of the day. I mean, today it's actually quite sunny, um, but it has been really, really wet. But it's been so mild. I mean, it's 19 today. It's like on the forecast, it's just like 20, 18, 19. It's not even cold at night. So the courgettes are still going strong. And that's why I want to be planting the field beans is in uh, the two or in at least one of the courgette beds. So I've been a bit held up and stuff in the polytunnel is still going. I mean, the tomatoes are still going. I need them out. <laughs> the peppers are still going. Uh, yeah, so it's got a bit, we've got that kind of lag again that we had last year where it's all got a bit warm just fired a bean across the room so I'll go and pick up the, the ones that I'm losing after this but basically we've got so much to do we've got loads of spinach to plant out and I don't know whether to put the spinach in the polytunnel or whether we're going to do another covered bed do you remember the failed covered bed last year so we've just got like um, a makeshift polytunnel that goes over one of the raised beds uh, last year we planted a load of stuff out in there and then covered it up and then because it was so warm and wet inside, the slugs just ate absolutely everything. There was nothing left the next time we opened it. It was like we hadn't even planted anything. So <laughs> don't know whether we're gonna do that again this year, but like I said, I'm gonna try and really utilize the greenhouse over winter this year. Normally, um, anything that we're going to over winter either goes into the polytunnel or I tend to bring it home and it goes in the like conservatory here. And that just means that anything I do end up leaving in the uh, greenhouse gets neglected and I'm determined not to do that this year. So the broad beans are going to be overwintering in there. The sweet peas are going to be overwintering in there. I've got a couple of other bits that I want to try and hold on to in there. So fingers crossed, uh, we're actually going to use it this year. So do we need the covered bed as well? I don't know. I really want to get stuff planted into the polytunnel. We've still got the tomatoes. And also, uh, when we were at uh, both B&Q and Squires um, earlier this week, I couldn't believe the price of the compost. You know, last week when I filled up that corner of the polytunnel with the kind of the spent soil from the cucumbers and the melons, well, the compost, it was like 15 pounds for two bags. And they weren't big bags, they were small bags. So the prospect of filling up the um, polytunnel with nice new compost is looking a bit far off at the moment. And while I'm doing this, bit of an update on Annie. Uh, you can probably hear him, he's just uh, behind me at the moment, snuffling, so he's still really snotty. Um, but he's getting better and he is still eating, so big thumbs up for that. And that, chaps, is the first, um, about a third, maybe a quarter. I will uh, pick the rest of them as they come dry. This warm, wet weather isn't doing them any favours, though, so we want a bit of cold, dry. <laughs> it never gives you what you want, does it? Anyway, these are beautiful. I'm going to go and put these in a little plastic bag and uh, go and freeze them. And then they're good to use over the winter. Oh, that one's a bit funny. Why not keep that one? Let's 
거거든요. I'll keep adding to this bag as I pick more because uh, obviously I can fit a lot more in the bag than I've got. Yeah, let's chuck them in here. So uh, that is the first lot of 2022 Bellotti's. I'm sure I've got some Greek Gigantes in here from last year, actually. There they are, hidden under there. Yeah, so that is last year's Greek Gigantes. I mean, which is lucky we've got so many left because uh, we didn't do very well with them this year. In fact, we've got nothing. <laughs> didn't even germinate so yeah glad we've still got them but uh, marvellous first lot of bolotties in the freezer and that chaps is the end of the week so i'm going to do a uh, coffee cheers not quite a beer there'll be a beer next week i promise mm. <sighs> cheers chaps see you next week